to you about not just our digital partnerships, but also the kind of programs and services that we have offered in this frontier. And we felt, who is the audience that can better appreciate it than the online media? So please uh, join me, Dr. Nino David Salmon. So this slide is a little bit dated, but I think the statistics are, are interesting. We got this from LinkedIn, uh, and it's just talking about some, you know, some key drivers behind all the activity that we're seeing. So 22.9 million, the number of banking applications that were downloaded in 2015. 10.5 million, the number of logins for those applications every day. 10.5 million logins to online mobile banking applications every day and 9.6 million on a computer. So again, you can see, I, I would bet you if we had these numbers updated, my, my guess is that the mobile would be even higher than, than uh, the computer, because I think that's where we're headed, where everything is happening on the mobile phone. 
we have actually had 150, or 100, yeah, 150 percent increase in our own downloads of City Mobile just over the past year. So uh, people are rapidly just kind of seeing this as a better way to to transact with us, and of course with other banks as well. So where are we? What are some of the things that that we're doing? Uh, we really been a leader here, and we will continue to be. Uh, Citibank Online, uh, we were one of the first uh, to you know, really create that presence and start to bring customers to the online environment. Uh, we've had real-time alerts for some time now for various types of transactions. Those of you, if any of you bank with us, uh, you'll know that if you take money out of the ATM, we send you an alert to your phone right away to let you know how much you have. If you use your credit card overseas, or if you use your credit card online, we also send an alert to tell you uh, that that transaction took place. Those are the, are the riskier transactions uh, at times, so I think what we felt it's important to keep customers notified of those activities, and we, we really find that they appreciate that. Uh, the City Mobile app we talked about a little while ago. We're continuing to improve this as well. Uh, those of you who, again, bank with us or have a card with us and use the app, uh, definitely if you don't, I would encourage you to. Uh, we're adding more and more functionalities to that um, all the time. So watch this space because it's just going to get better and better and you're going to be able to do more and more um, on the mobile. And then also voice biometrics. Um, some of you may have heard about this. We've actually launched this recently in our call center where uh, a customer, instead of you know the typical uh, you know, waiting for an agent to answer and then going through, giving your account number, you know, your mother's maiden name, other identifying information, it takes, it takes several minutes. Um, and you know, sometimes the questions don't really remember everything, so it can take a little while. Voice biometrics kind of skips all of that and actually takes a voice print. And every person's voice, of course, is absolutely unique. And it's a very, very secure way uh, to authenticate a customer, and it's very quick and it's very easy. So that's something we launched last year, we're also very proud. So what is our digital strategy? It, it's really very simple. It's about delivering a remarkable experience. You know, giving the customer a seamless, easy, and secure way to transact with us. So how are we doing this? What are some of the things that we're doing inside our company in order to drive this? We're very focused on this, and we want to be the leading digital bank. So fintech and innovation. You know, within our company, we're actually embracing uh, the fintech revolution. Uh, we've got a team of people focused on this. We are looking at these technologies that are emerging and really trying to think ahead, how do we adapt this? How do we serve the customer and get better? Again, it's back to the remarkable experience. How do we make the experience better? And this space, as, as all of you know, is changing so fast. Mobile first is another tenet of this strategy. Uh, we know that the participation in the internet is rapidly moving to the mobile phone. Um, all of us use the phone so much, and more and more, I think that's probably where we get most of our internet content. Uh, yes, we have our computers that we use for work, or maybe at home we have a PC that, that we get on, but I'm sure all of you find that you know, we're on that less and less, and we're getting more and more content on the mobile phone. So it's important for us to make sure that what we build is gonna work well on the mobile environment, very important. And we're gonna to continue to work to digitize the customer experiences. And again, it's, it's not about just forcing people to go online, it's about making the experience better, uh, making it easier to transact. And that's always the focus. How can we use the, the digital realm to make something easier and more effective for the customer? So there's a lot here. I, I would like to touch on a few of these because these are examples of some of the the real world activities that you can do with us online to continue to refine and grow. Cards and loans applications. One of the big things we're actually here to talk about today, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Insurance. We have tools now that customers can check to see what would their insurance needs be, you know, based on their, their state in life, the size of their family, their goals for retirement. We have calculators there that can help customers to, to compute what kind of coverages they might need. Bills payment everyday thing that we have to do. Uh, again, we're always looking for ways to uh, advance this. Uh, I think we're gonna see the market changing as well. More and more, I think customers are gonna demand those uh, abilities to make 
payment online as opposed to uh, you know, going to a physical location and, and handing over cash or a check to pay a bill. Funds transfers, we do that now using move money between banks, within city, out of city. Online rewards redemption, this is already live for us on our uh, CBAL, our internet site. It will come to the mobile phone soon as well, where those of you who have cards with us and are earning rewards points, you're gonna be able to redeem those points online. You'll be able to view your redemption options, your catalog, your miles transfers, anything that you'd like to do, it's gonna be right there on the mobile phone. It's already on the PC. Click for cash and pay late after purchase. So this is something we launched last year, and we've always, as, as Annette mentioned earlier, uh, we do sell loans. We sell personal loans the in the traditional sense. We also sell loans to customers who have our credit cards, and we offer them to convert their line to an installment loan if they need extra cash. But we've taken that whole experience online, and, and now what we do is we send those offers to customers, and it's in the form of a link. And when they click on the link, they can actually go through the, the, a very quick process to book their loan, select how much they'd like, how long they want to pay it back over, uh, and with the press of a button, it's done. And the money is deposited to their bank account that they nominate. It's straight through, it's seamless. Uh, and that was just launched last year. We've just done the same thing for what we call pay light after purchase, or, and we're also familiar with installment, 0% installment, everybody offers that. But sometimes you need to make a large purchase and the merchant doesn't offer that. And we'd like to give the customer the option to turn that kind of a transaction into an installment as well. And it used to involve calling and speaking to someone and going through all the options. Now that's online as well. Uh, it, we will send a customer an SMS immediately after a large transaction, let them know you have the option to convert this to installment. Would you like to do that if they would? And again, very simple online process, kind of a mini app that launches from the link. It takes them through it, and at the end, it's done in a matter of a minute or two. Live chat is also live now. Uh, we, uh, we, we have this uh, available. Again, it's on the, the, the online platform. We're gonna look at bringing that to mobile at some point as well. Uh, another channel, another way to interact with us. Um, calling, of course, is one way, uh, but live chat sometimes is convenient as well. Uh, depending on where you are, if you're in the middle of something else, it's very easy to ask a quick question, uh, bill a balance, or uh, some other concern that you may have on your account and an agent can respond directly to you through the chat. Global view of accounts has been there for a while actually, but it's something that uh, really benefits our customers who have accounts with city in, in multiple countries. Uh, and we do have quite a few of those, and it allows them to take a look at their entire relationship across um, all the countries that they have uh, accounts with city in, and see that all in one place. And then of course, you know, other services, we're looking at digitizing, ordering of checkbook, checkbook lead in, in changes, all of those things which normally would involve a visit to a branch or a call, we're trying to make that easier and put that online. Now, this is what we really want to talk about here today. New applications for uh, credit cards. We have now launched, and we are the first, to offer a fully digitized application process for credit cards. Now, you can go to any bank and apply online for a credit card, and it used to be the case with us as well, where that application was basically a form that was filled out on, on the internet, and then it was sent to you know, a team in the back end, and sometimes they would have to print it out and key it into another system and process it. We've changed all that, and we've created a process which is now straight through. So a customer who meets all the requirements, uh, and again, it doesn't happen 100% of the time, but if a customer who meets all the requirements, and generally if they're uh, a customer who's got other credit cards already, they have a copy of their ID handy, they can fill out the form online in about four or five steps, different pages that they go through, and scanning their ID at the end, and we will tell them right on the spot if they are conditionally approved or not. Pending verifications uh, that we do after the fact, that again is a straight through process. And in roughly five to seven days, again, depending on what needs to be verified, if anything, you know, that customer can have their card in their hands. So this we're really, really excited about. You know, of course, you've seen our agents in the malls, uh, and that's typically how we 
Uh, we get our customers, and we continue to get a lot of our customers through our sales agents that go to the malls and other locations and, and meet customers and talk about their value proposition. But we, we want to change all that. We really want to make the experience easier. Uh, apply online and get something extra. So that, that's obviously if you want someone to do something, it's nice if you offer a little bit of an incentive, and, and that's what we're doing now. So uh, through the end of April, uh, customers who apply online, new customers to city, uh, existing customers, you already have your card, you, you're welcome to apply for another card that offers for new customers. You have two things that will uh, be offered to you in addition to anything that you would get if you applied with us in a physical location. Those of you who have seen us in the malls, again, we usually will give out a small gift for someone taking the trouble to take the time to fill out an application, a bag of popcorn or an umbrella or something like that. So we wanted to offer that experience also. So the applicant, whether they're approved or not, will receive a, a digital coupon to redeem a free NES pretzel and iced tea. Uh, so that's number one. That's a turning gift, basically, a, a, but it's electronic. And then, if the customer is approved, not only will they get a city rewards card currently with no annual fee, they'll also get a free Fitbit charge too. That's a SRP of 8,000. So uh, really, there's no offer like this out there. And we're excited about it. We put this offer out there because we really want to build awareness of this capability that we have and how easy it is. We want customers to experience it. And that's why we've asked all of you here today to see this uh, and hear about it firsthand. You know, in addition to the acquisition, we're doing a lot of other things online as well. And all of this is in your, your media kit. But just some of the brands here that you can see, these are examples of companies that we either have active offers with right now or are planning. All, I think actually we have something ongoing with all of these. And one I'd really like to talk about is Amazon. Uh, now, there's no other bank in the Philippines that has a tie-up with Amazon like this. Uh, we have a global tie-up with Amazon, and we're offering uh, a discount now, uh, and I believe it's 10% on uh, certain categories, tablets, phones, PCs, and, for, and uh, I think free shipping as well, or discounted shipping. It's in your pack. But what's coming next is even more exciting. Customers will be able to use their city rewards points to pay for things online on the Amazon site. It's called Pay With Points. We launched it in the US uh, a few years back. It's extremely popular. It's a very seamless experience. When you reach the end of your transaction, you're in the shopping cart, if you've registered your city card or Amazon Pay with Points, you see the amount of points available that you have and how much value that equates to. And you can use that to actually pay for all or part of your purchase. Really, really powerful. Just wanted to go through a couple of travel offers too. We have a number of online travel offers. These are all active right now. Agoda, 10% off, this is all year long. Expedia, 8% off until October on hotels. Asia Travel, 12% off on hotel bookings until June 30th. And Airbnb, 1,800 pesos off your first stay with Airbnb, and that's valid until November. This is just a sample. You're gonna see more and more coming from us in terms of online offers where we're partnering with merchants in all categories who are doing online and we want to show that the value is there and bring customers to uh, our products. So more. Shopping, Delora, 12%, that's year long. Island Roads, also year long, 10% off. Fuelbox.ph, a great way to buy your things from Amazon and have them sent here. 15% off on shipping fees until March 31st. Galleon, also a, a company that you can use to buy things from abroad and send them to the Philippines. That's 10% off. And then shipping cards, similarly, 15% off until July. Both Galleon and shipping cards until July 31st. So what else can you expect from us? Well, more and more digital partnerships, uh, more and more digital offers, more and more functionality. Uh, we want to continue on this drive to be the best digital bank and to make the experience seamless for our customers. 
I just want to touch on a couple of points here as, as we come toward the end, and, and we'll have some time for some questions, and I'll be happy to go around and, and talk with, with many of you. You know, our vision is really to open up the world of finance to enable growth and economic progress. And that, that's our mission as a, as a company. But digitally, we want to do that securely, and we want to do that globally. Um, so again, it's very core to our strategy, and will be for a long, long time to come. We like to think of ourselves actually as a technology company with a banking license. We, we look at the amount of effort that we put into technology, uh, both in our uh, in, in the ones that we'll be familiar with. So calling your call center or uh, you know going online, the amount of effort that we put there, the amount of investment is tremendous, and it will continue to be. So that's what I had. Uh, thank you for listening. I think uh, Annette. We'll make a couple of comments. We've got a couple other things to share with you. And, and again, I'll be happy to take some questions and we'll, uh, we'll walk around and do that around the table, sir. Right? Thank you. Do you want me to stay here? Thank you. of whether we're able to approve you or not. You and, yeah. That's my follow-up question. The second gift is the Fitbit, which comes after you've been approved and after you've met some uh, spend requirements on the account. And how long will it take for them to know if they were approved or not? If you have all of the documents ready, you have all your information handy, and again, if a person already has a credit card with another bank that they've handled properly, then we can give a decision immediately. Uh, right there we can tell them that you're conditionally approved and we will verify a few things in the back end and then your card should arrive in a week or so it's in a week or so we invite you to try it and we mm -hmm. welcome feedback whether it's yeah. user friendly yeah. uh -huh. um, when we say you get the uh, anti ans you must complete the application yes uh -huh. yes that's and, right and uh, the way they figure it out in the system is you cannot leave it blank so ah, you have okay to that's it one out. of yeah. the requirements it has to be a valid application <laughs> that's right <laughs> Or should and then be right after, you will get an SMS to mm -hmm. say that this qualifies you to redeem a free anti ants pretzel and ice cream. So you take that to the store. That's right. That's right. So that's like, okay, I'll go online, I'll do everything, I don't need to go out, mm -hmm. and still I have something. 
that's right. Not buy anymore. Exactly. I'm sure you go out to the <laughs> Um, two questions. The first one is um, the one that I've noticed that has the most difficulty with transitioning to digital are the senior citizens. Okay. Um, and oftentimes, what happens? My mom and dad, they're their seventies. Okay. So I'm not a spring chicken either. So, um, so often what happens is that they end up asking us or even younger ones to do it for them. Um, other than us doing that, do you have any uh, uh, commercial or tutorial that would encourage the senior citizens to be the one to do the transactions themselves so they could shift to digital? No, it's a great question. And actually, there's a couple of things that we do. One, uh, periodically, we do send communications to our customers, that to all of our customers, that explain the digital platforms that we have, what they can do, encourage them to use them. Also, in our uh, call centers, if a customer calls, our, our agents there are always talking to our customers about the digital options. If, if someone calls just to get their available balance, they can say, you know, sir, ma'am, you need help, you can go online, it's very easy, I can actually tell you how to do this, I can send you a guide, so that an email can be sent right at that time to that customer that would explain to them how to do it. Um, so we're. We're recognizing, again, as I said earlier, we're not trying to force people to go online. We're trying to show them that it's a better experience and it's very easy. And of course, you know, some people are going to be more receptive than others, so we're going to try to bring them along. Yeah. In um, fact, for, um, for certain services of Sydney, we always do video tutorials. Mm -hmm. So like Citibank Online has been around for a while. Every mm -hmm. time we refresh the site, we put up a tutorial mm -hmm. on video so you would know how to use all the menus and the functionalities. Yeah. Um, because some people might need the step-by-step -step instruction. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, my second question, um, I noticed, I was, I was looking at all the partner companies that you have, mm -hmm. and there were two that stood out to me. One was that Grab is mentioned on the, um, yeah, press release, mm -hmm. but it's not there. And then you oh, mentioned Uber okay. now, because you it's have not there. We have so yeah. many, we, we just and, gave you a sample. Yeah. Actually, it just Grab feels like, for, for Grab, like, uh, is there any benefit to use specific city card with Grab? Like, are there additional discounts? And then, my, connected to that, again, another company was Airbnb, mm -hmm. where you mentioned that they get uh, 1,800 off their first booking. The first time. Yeah, but what if, for example, I've used the Airbnb before? So does it mean I can't get that anymore? Yeah, no, the, the, that promo is designed uh, to new help users. You know, new users to onboard Airbnb and experience it for the first time. So uh, obviously well, when we work with partners, you know, there, it's a two-way street. We're trying to give something of value to our customers and, and they're also trying to uh, you know, achieve the goals of their business. And Airbnb, of course, wants more people to sign up and experience. So in that case, yeah, only for the first time. But if I install the Airbnb app, but I've never booked on it, mm. I can still... Sure, yeah, it. yeah, it has to, it, it, you still have to book it for the first time. Okay. Thank you. And just to add to your question about the partnership, the nice thing about Siri is we have global partnerships, mm. so like the Amazon, because they're talking to them at a global level, and then the offers will cut across markets. Then we have regional partnerships, like Grab is an Asia-wide partnership. Right. And then Dave and his team are also very busy building partnerships in country. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have Grab on Asia level, but in country we would have something with Uber. So that's why it's actually a whole scheme that's of right. offers. Um, of course, we're, we're encouraging everyone to enter personal information online. Um, is there a security in place that, that is uh, behind all this uh, yes. initiative? Absolutely. I mean, that, that's actually the most important thing uh, whenever we build a, a banking application. It has to be secure. Uh, and uh, we're very good at doing this. Uh, we do it in multiple countries around the world, uh, and we take the security very, very seriously. So there are a number of layers. Uh, of security steps that are put in place, including the connection itself uh, and how the data is stored uh, once it reaches the city, uh, that customers can be very confident of its security. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Yes, please. Welcome back, please. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Jean Kumar, 
Ayan, game also an IT practitioner. Uh, just a share, and also a question before, uh, after that. Um, one of our predicaments is to, uh, in implementing a system for, um, for Asian countries, specifically Philippines, is the inhibition of um, doing it online and everything. So specifically the finance uh, side. So what is the percentage of uh, consumers here that would do this one? If, what would be uh, uh, what would be uh, the percentage? Because uh, that is how we uh, we explain to the client that it's secured. Here are some of the uh, uh, what we call encryption tools. Yeah, yeah. So the idea is there's still um, um, they, they're, they're still doubt, a doubt. Yeah. So, so I, I actually I think I mentioned earlier that across Asia about 30 to 40 percent of applications are coming to us through online. We're not quite at that point in the Philippines. We're closer to around 10 percent. 10 percent, yes. But we, we're, again, through programs like this, we're trying to, to grow that because other markets and other parts of the world, you're seeing that you know maybe as many as half of the customers are applying online uh, versus a physical channel. For example, that's the case in the U.S. Uh, across the yes. market. At least half are applying online and the rest are going out direct mail forms and then come back in. So it's a great question. I, I think that um, we're, we're trying to be a pioneer here. We're trying to uh, show uh, our customers and our prospective customers here in the Philippines that this is a, a great way to interact with the bank. Uh, but it, it takes some time for people to get used to it. So for that, what uh, is the initial uh, uh, orientation if, for example, that would be the case or initiative from Citibank uh, City, uh, City Card? Yeah, so I, I think simply what we're trying to do is get the word out. Uh, we know we've built the we built the platform that I talked about where a customer can apply online and, and go digitize all the way through. Uh, it's the first time uh, that that offering is there. So now we're just trying to get the word out. We're advertising in various online media channels. Okay. We have an offer like this one with the Fitbit. It's very strong, very attractive. Uh, so we're really just focused on getting the word out because once the customer can experience it, we're confident that they'll enjoy it. Uh, maybe some testimony, perhaps from the, uh, uh, for those who use it? Um, yeah, that's something that we could look into. Okay. Yeah, 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 thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I also just want to point out that maybe some of you are thinking at the back of your mind, if you go around credit card issuers now who all have websites, you can apply online, right? But that application is not the same platform that we have because essentially it's an order form. They will take your information, but post that, there will still have to be some interaction. Like maybe you need to send your fax, or they will do the back end in terms of risk profiling before they come back to you and say whether you're approved or not. In this case, we have fully automated the system so that even the credit risk and profiling happens as you complete the questionnaire. And if you have digitized um, copies of your documents, mm -hmm. your ID, your IDR, you just upload it also in right. the system. So no need to look for a printer, scanner, right. find right. a fax machine. Everything happens in the website seamlessly. That's right, Anna. Thank you. And I owe you a question, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind helping Ted Cloudy if I was at that page. Um, Looking at the, the, the kit that you have and the, the platform for the online application, do you have any specific uh, uh, age group targets that uh, you are campaigning for the online application? Uh, no, not, not, we're, we're not targeting any particular age group. Uh, you know, it, it's welcome, uh, any qualified customer is welcome to apply. Okay. Yes, because just the nature of the kit, like the Fitbit, and uh, also the skill set to do the online, so I think it's geared more for the sort of computer savvy type of uh, people. I think that's a fair point. Uh, but again, you know, what we're trying to do is get the word out and get as many, we'd like all customers of all age groups to try it and experience it. And, and I think over time, more and more people will start to become comfortable uh, interacting this way. Uh, to supplement the campaign, will you be doing something like an online application assistance, like in the malls, like for example, instead of just encouraging them to, to do it online, uh, maybe a lot of people would be more encouraged if they are in the mall, somebody assisting them 
like how to do it? That's a very, very good point, sir. We've actually done that um, already. Uh, we haven't done it extensively, but we did do that in two locations at the end of last year. Uh, we were, uh, for one weekend we were at SMRA, and another weekend we were at the Zalora pop-up store in, mm -hmm. in Puerto Macasio. And we did exactly that. Uh, and, you know, it was just a test, uh, to, but, but it, was, it was a good way to uh, show customers what the experience is like, and it's something that we're looking at potentially doing more. Thank you. Thank you. I must also point out that Fit Bit is actually one of our most generous rewards um, for a successful application. And so we obviously want to reward those who are digitally engaging with us and make it really compelling for them to try something new. And the card itself comes with no annual fee. It's a, it's a, it's a double benefit. Uh, it would, no annual fee uh, is is the offer. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. No annual just fee. Just for the first year. No, not just for the first year. That's no annual fee. Uh, that's for uh, specific. Only for rewards, yes. Thank for you. Only for our rewards card. Right. And we change our offers from time to time, but that's uh, that's currently the offer. So if you choose to get a different SIM card, let's say uh, in your miles, uh, the there is an annual fee. fee. The first year is is waived, but there is an annual fee. For our other products, the premium model, or cashback, uh, or shell. Mm -hmm. But it's, a, it's worth noting that we do have one product where you don't have to get an annual fee for life as long as you use it. Correct. Uh, and that's the security of the card. Correct. Well, that's what I have. Uh, premium miles. I don't, oh, I, I don't pay. Sorry. I will bill you on the second <laughs> 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 no, That's the best reward for me. Yes, yeah, because yeah. you Not travel a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, well, thank you for your business. And, and I think you. that's a um, yeah. that's a great point. I mean, we great do support a lot of customers are, they see the value of, of Premier Miles because they do travel a lot. They do have a lounge access, and of course, there's a cost for those things that we do charge for kids. But we like to offer options, and, and I think if you look across other markets, typically that's the card business is developing. Where you know you have certain products which are uh, lower cost that don't have a maintenance fee. Uh, others maybe have a, a richer value proposition, but they come with a fee. And think through this one. And because you mentioned premier miles, uh, let me do a shameless plug. So earlier, uh, Dave talked about our online rewards redemption. Again, we're, I think, the only one in the market where everything also happens online. So if you had that card and you went to the travel portal, there are very specific um, exclusive programs that you can avail of. Like sometimes you get um, double the rewards points if you convert it to the Hilton rewards program. For a traveler, those are really good deals. And the travel portal on that also offers the ability to book your travel directly, and you can select your flight, select your hotel, um, and you're not subject to the blackout dates that you might be subject to when you use your points. So it's another alternative method. And then when you get to the end and you're ready to book your itinerary, you can use your miles to pay for all or part of it. So that, that's also another option that's there. And that's there today on the uh, on C on Citibank Online. Yes. You mentioned, um, you mentioned. Sorry, one, one more here. Yeah. Um, you mentioned so a while ago. I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite get that. Okay. Uh, you mentioned a while ago that uh, for your, your new uh, online application platform, uh, the Zoom or Fax machine, um, what about those IDs that you require? So the ID, uh, it can be scanned or uh, if you're actually are using your mobile phone to apply, which you can because we have a mobile optimized version of this, um, you can take a picture and, and, uh, and, and upload it that way. But if you're using a, a computer, the typical way would be to either, if you have a scanned file of, of your ID on your computer, or you can take it with your computer's camera, any, any way of getting it in. But we don't need a fax machine. You just need a, a JPEG file or, or a camera or a you know, picture taken with a camera on the phone, right. and that's it. Okay, and one last question. Mm -hmm. sure. um, since we're talking about the digital future, um, are we planning uh, in the future to accept uh, Bitcoin payments? <laughs> uh, well, that's not at this time, uh, but you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we have the, uh, the FinTech group within City, and we're looking at all the technologies that are emerging, and it's a very fast moving space, so yes, who knows? Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, who knows? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Since this is a digital 
I'll sign up. Uh, what uh, if I sign up and then I complete the application? And then it tells me that uh, I'm not qualified for the SIM card. How long till I can, can I apply again? Or? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. Um, you would need to wait six months. Uh, if we weren't able to approve you, you can apply again six months later uh, to uh, try again. Thank you. What is also the same parameter if you did a uh, traditional Correct. application? Correct. I hope um, this question hasn't been asked because I stepped out. Um, it seems that we've become more lenient in accepting credit card applications. I'm sure that you know, with the advent of so many other credit cards becoming more lenient, how are you protecting Citibank when it comes to people who apply, get approved simply because they met the requirements, so to speak, um, but won't be able to make the payment? I, I used to work with um, Citibank, so I kind of have an idea how to go about yeah. things. Um, and it was a lot more strict before. And now, um, from what I heard, as long as you have a credit card with someone else, you're able to pass all the papers. Um, the chances of getting conditionally approved is higher. So what's your um, plan B for those who may take advantage of the um, leniency that is being applied now to credit card applications? Well, no, that's a great question. And, you know, first of all, credit card is, is an unsecured loan product. Uh, you know, so we do have cases where, for various reasons, people are not able to pay us back. It, it, it's kind of part of the business. Uh, we haven't really changed our standards, though, I mean, even with, with online. One of the things that has happened in the market over the last few years, though, is we don't have a credit bureau. Uh, so customers who have credit cards with other banks or have taken loans, uh, personal loans, that is, uh, they would have a record there in the credit bureau that we can see. So that's something that wasn't there before, and that actually helps us to make a better decision. Yeah, and so I, I wouldn't probably use the word lenient. Um, mm -hmm. What we've done is make the application process more efficient Correct. for the clients. Um, but because of the credit bureau, I think we can make a decision faster. Because that's right. we could take a look at the database. And, right. um, and I I have to say, City is one of the, City is a bank that does not just deal with ad -web. They don't just deal with the credit card. Mm -hmm. um, you're more likely to get approved for another card. In our case, we're also concerned about whether we still need the additional credit line. Mm -hmm. So the risk profiling is a top notch in that yeah, area. Yeah. And then we put it actually on a digitized format. So it That's can happen in That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Hi, Maranika Chan. Maranika Chan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank of course, you. you can still cast day above, yeah. you know, disabled if you want it from